It's 743. Welcome back. Google is the latest tech company to add screen time limits and other parental controls to its computers. The company announced it is updating its family link features across its cloud-based devices. The company says about 50% of kids between the ages of 6 to 12 use a laptop. Parents can now set daily time for screen time and set a time for kids to shut down completely at bedtime. Google says the controls are not a substitute for having a conversation with your kids about managing the amount of time they spend on their devices. So one part of our lives most affected by screen time is our sleep. So new research out of the Salk Institute pinpoints why our computers and phones disrupt our sleep and what we can do about it. Dr. Sachin Panda is a senior author on the study and joins us now. Good morning. Good morning, Lauren. You're, you're always here and you're helping us maximize our <laughs> sleep time, which is so important, really for everybody yeah. we know that study after study proves that but there is this uh, study that came out of Salk that, that says what and especially about blue light yeah so uh, my lab has been studying this blue light sensor in our eye and that senses blue light and actually it keeps track of how much blue light we have seen in the last 15 minutes 30 minutes or even a couple of hours and we counts that blue light and tells our brain that, well, there's too much blue light, it may not be time for you to sleep. So it reduces the sleep hormone melatonin. And then we stay jazzed up and it's very difficult to sleep. So that's why most of our screens do produce a lot of blue light. And that's the nice, bright blue light that keeps us awake. But that blue light becomes uh, bad at night time. Okay, so because of this protein in our eye, it, it registers the blue light and says, oh, it's daytime, stay yep. awake, yep. and reduces melatonin. And so we try to like look at our phone in bed, yeah. right, which we all do, and then yeah. we set it on our nightstand, and that's the absolute wrong thing to do yeah. because you're automatically decreasing the amount of what your body needs in order to, to sleep to properly. Fall, fall asleep. And second thing it does is it actually resets your clock. So that means one night, if you stay awake looking at your screen till 1 a.m., then it tells the brain, oh, maybe the daylight has changed. And next day also, you may not fall sleepy, feel sleepy until 12 or 1. So it does double whammy because one day, on the day you see blue light, it reduces sleep. And on the next day, it also resets your uh, sleep time. So it really just throws us all out of whack. Yeah. So what are we supposed to do? Because uh, you know, I mean, Dr. Panda, we're all on our computers, our laptops in bed. It's finally time the kids have gone to sleep. We can <laughs> we can handle those emails or text, all the texts we didn't get back to earlier in the day. What are we supposed to do? Yeah, so one thing that um, technology has made it much easier to do is now you can go to your phone, your laptop, and there are now features called night shift or night light. Which I just it, discovered. And you can turn it on <laughs> and set it to say 9 o'clock. For example, all of my devices are set to 9 p.m. So even if I'm working on my email, when the screen uh, color changes and it dims down, it's kind of a sleep alarm clock. Mm -hmm. It nudges me to say, okay, so now it's time. In the next 10, 15 minutes, just wind down sort of the computer and go to bed. We can do the same thing for all of our devices so that at least there is a signal that you should now prepare to go to sleep. It also reduces blue light, so maybe in the next hour or so, I actually feel sleepy and then I go to bed. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we can do. The next uh, there is another paper we just published in collaboration with uh, University of Washington. Many kids still have to do their homework mm -hmm. and they stay awake. So th in the morning when the school starts at 7.15, 7.30, then they're continuously sleep deprived. So Seattle school district delayed their school start time by one hour. And that increased sleep in teenagers by 34 minutes, more than half an hour. And these kids now also have less uh, tardiness because they are going to school at the right time and also increase their grade by 4.8%. Just imagine if someone is getting 86, 87 in four or five subjects, now he or she can get an A. And that's really exciting because we can do 
now there are many things at our disposal. First thing in the evening, we can change our screen time, uh, uh, switch on night shift, night light features, and also we should pay attention to when the school starts. Starts, right. And maybe we so can So you're definitely in favor of starting around 8 o'clock in the morning as opposed to 7 o'clock in the well, morning. Well, biologically, what happens is teenagers are actually more sensitive to night light. And mm. we older adults are not that sensitive. So that's why when a teenager does homework on laptop, he or she is more likely to stay jazzed up and will go to bed late. Whereas older adults, such as us, or the school teachers, um, they're actually waking up earlier. We're so not a, as affected by the not as light. affected. So really need to pay attention to how much screen time our kids are spending, especially right before bed. Right before bed. So okay. for two to three hours before bed, they should have that night shift feature turned on okay. so that they should get restorative sleep for well, seven to eight hours. Definitely good food for thought because, <laughs> you know, a good night's sleep is important for, yeah. for all of us. So good night's sleep begins the day. So. All right, Dr. Panda, thank you so much. Appreciate the tips. Thank you. Interesting. We'll be right back. On Good Morning San Diego, stay with